Welcome to Intermediate Accounting. Today we'll be talking about retained earnings. So retained earnings for a corporation is a little bit different from other entities. Um, so that's what we'll cover is talking about how to calculate a retained earnings statement or how to calculate out the retained earnings. Here we have Franklin Co Company and they report the following information. They had a correction of under of understatement of income tax expense in prior years net of tax. They declared some dividends. They have net income and the retained earnings as of 1-1 of 2020 as reported um, is 3,900,500. The Franklin Company should report retained earnings at 1-1 of 20 as adjusted at what amount? Okay, first let me show you, well first let's talk about this adjustment, okay? So sometimes what happens in a business, in a corporation, is we'll be going along and we'll have closed our books, okay, filed our tax return, and now we're doing a calculation and we determine that, wow, we made a mistake last year. It's not significant, but it's enough that we have to do something about it. So rather than going back and restating our income statement, what we do is we have a, what's called a prior period adjustment and that gets reported on the retained earnings statement. So now, if the result of that prior period adjustment means that we would have had higher net income, then we would increase our retained earnings, right? Because when we would have closed that amount to our retained earnings account, it would have resulted in higher um, higher net income. On the flip side, if it's additional expense, it would have uh, resulted in a lower net income, so we would have to reduce our retained earnings. So this says we have a correction of understatement of depreciation expense of, in prior years. So if we understated our depreciation, that means we didn't record as much depreciation as we should have, that would have resulted in a lower net income. So as a result, our net income is overstated, so we need to reduce it. So let me show you. Here we have a sample retained earnings statement, and so it says, and it shows you how we would, um, how we would adjust our retained earnings for a prior period adjustment. So we start with our retained earnings as reported, okay? So this is what was on our prior financial statement. Now we have our correction for the overstatement of net income in a prior period. So remember I said that if our expenses are understated, right, meaning we didn't show as much depreciation expense as we should have, that means our net income is going to be overstated. So we put in here correction for overstatement of net income in a prior period, net of tax. These types of, um, these types of corrections are always shown net of tax and we indicate in parentheses what it's for. It's a depreciation error. So in this particular case it was 50000 so um, I have to reduce my retained earnings by 50000 so I take my 675 I reduce it for my error and now I have retained earnings as adjusted. So the key is is as reported and as adjusted. So let's come over here. Alright so all that really matters is because, um, well, the question is asking, what should we report as our retained earnings on January 1st, 2020, as adjusted? And if you recall from the retained earnings statement that I um, showed you, we start with our retained earnings as reported. Then we have our prior period adjusted adjustment and then we have our retained earnings as adjusted. Okay. So here our retained earnings as reported is 3,900,500. That's a 500. And it says this is an understatement of depreciation expense. So what that means is um, I have a higher net income so I need to reduce my net income by 
171,500. So I'm going to just put PPA for a prior period adjustment. And so if I take my 3,900,500 and I subtract out my 1,871,500, I'm going to get 2,029,000. And that is answer D. 2,029,000 retained earnings as adjusted. I hope that made sense.